Just under the most pressure in the second half of the season. We've seen two fired. Matt Rule earlier this year, earlier this week, Frank Reich. Chris, I'll give you the first pick. Who is the coach who should be most concerned about possibly being out at some point, either during or after this season? Well, I, I, I think the, the, the most obvious one to me is Lovey Smith. I mean, one, because of the results of the football team. Two, because it doesn't really feel like the team ever really wanted to hire him to begin with. And that was just odd last year with how all that kind of took place. So the Josh McCown conversation and all that stuff that went on too, uh, I, it just has always felt like it was a, a, a place being held for somebody else on the radar or some other move to where we get the team where we want. Then we're going to, you know, go into the head coach thing there. So I'll, I'll go with Lovey to start it here. Yeah, you know, the McCown thing, remember this, if Brian Flores hadn't filed his lawsuit, I think the Texans would have hired Josh McCown. I, oh, so I, they, would I, have, yeah. they would have been Jim Ursay before Jim Ursay. Right. They would have done the someone with no experience whatsoever coaching at the college or pro level. I, I Look, I think it's going to be difficult. We have to factor in the climate with the Flores lawsuit. It's going to yeah. be difficult yeah. to fire Lovey Smith. But Jack Easterby's out. The team isn't good, and I hadn't really thought of Sean Payton as a candidate for the Texans. But you know what? If Cal McNair decides I've had enough and I'll pay this guy $25 million, I mean, Houston is close enough to Dallas, and it's a competitive, not a competitive division, not as competitive as other divisions. And if he has the first overall pick and Cleveland's first-round pick, he could, he could they uh, got some get picks a quarterback that he feels pretty years. good about. Yeah, yeah. they got yeah. some picks there. So, yeah. I don't disagree with that, but I still think the guy who should be the most concerned is Nathaniel Hackett. He wasn't hired by current ownership of the Broncos. It has not gone well at all. And even though they barely beat the Jaguars to stave off an in-season firing, I still think Hackett can be gone. And if I had to guess right now, unless there's some improvement that I don't see coming, I think he will be gone after one year because I think that I, I know that those Walmart people are ruthless and they are not going to shed a tear they're going to write the check and move on from nathaniel hackett if they don't think the team is moving in the right direction so that's who i believe should be the most concerned by far well they're three and five like what do you think it'll take like there for him to kind of quiet that that conversation like what, what what's the number you seven look and at? ten seven and ten seven you and think ten. They'll, they'll be he'll be okay i think there's a legitimate but even then even then the off they got to get something out of russell wilson that makes it look like russell wilson i i know i know not like a guy who never was russell wilson okay okay all right i, I hear you there and that you know that that's where i i want people to you know approach slowly a little bit more with that and i understand some of the optics there but damn you know, Russell Wilson's got to take some of this accountability too. I mean, you, we all watched the game in London. You know, the ESPN crew did a great job uh, many a time showing like, I don't know what the hell this guy's looking at anymore. I don't know. All he does is look at the rush. And that's where, you know, I feel for Nathaniel Hackett a little bit. All right. All right. Next one, Cliff Kingsbury. I think I'm going to go there. I, it just, again, it just feels like the the stars are aligning that way. And it feels like it's, slowly crumbling there let alone we know I think we felt like even with the extension and all this that if things didn't go well that this was on the radar you know I don't know the, the you're better at, at at being the field the owners and will they pay this guy money down the road or are they comfortable with that to fire him but uh Cliff Kingsbury is the next guy I'll go with he got that contract extension to 2027. We don't know how much is guaranteed. We don't, we've never even saw how much he's making. I think he could be out after this year, and I have a feeling the buyout won't be what we would right. otherwise have believed yes. it would be. I'll go Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. And, yeah. and look, I, I, I think he's a very good coach, but you got Deshaun Watson coming back. You have a full offseason to attract someone to come in and take over with Deshaun Watson. There have been some self-inflicted wounds this year. I just think he's he's got to he's got to button it up for the rest of the season. Coach is under the most pressure for the second half of the season. Final round, Chris. Who do you have? Man, I think I'm going to go. This is this is a hard one here. I, I think I'm going to go with Dennis Allen though. I think that's the guy I'm going to look at here. I know Dan Campbell, of course, is in this conversation too. You know, but. But Detroit, we didn't expect, like, a whole lot from Detroit. You know, the Saints have still had some pieces here where you go, hey, they can be real good and be a player. It hasn't been good. 
And then I think what makes it worse for Dennis Allen is like the defense, which was the strong point of the team, you know, is not. You know, statistically they're not that bad. They're like twelfth in football or eleventh in football. But scoring defense, which is a big deal because you know you got to score more points than the other team to win the game, they let up. They're letting up more big plays than ever. And they're what I think twenty eighth in football in that department. So Dennis Allen's the last guy I'll pick, Mike. I got others on the list here. Ron Rivera, I think, should at least be a little concerned just with the potential ownership change. Now, maybe that gets him one year minimum if a new owner comes in in March. Todd Bowles, I think, needs to be a little concerned. But I'm going to go Brandon Staley as my official pick. Wow. Because of Justin Herbert, and they've never really gotten enough out of Justin Herbert. And there's too many of these self-inflicted wounds, the obsession with analytics, the overly aggressive. And for all we know, he's doing what someone's telling him to do, but it sure comes off as his choice, as his way, as his strategy for being a football coach. And with, with Peyton floating around out there, I know that Dean Spanos may not want to pay Sean Peyton. Sometimes, sometimes you have to. If you really want to make your team competitive, Chris. So you think if they're like, if they don't get in the playoffs in eight or any nine, he could be in even trouble there. If that they kinda... think they could get Peyton, I think he could be in trouble. Yeah. We're in trouble because we're out of time. See ya. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.